This is a good day that the Lord has made. Yes, yes it is. Lord. Let every praise be to our God. Amen. 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 We'd like to begin by sharing with you the scripture. And we'll be reading from the Nantifield Thumb of Psalms, first seven verses. And then we will go to the Lord and pray. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with songs. For the Lord is the great God. And the great king above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are hills also. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Let us pray. O Lord God Almighty, great is thy faithfulness. O God, we acknowledge your sovereignty but you are the Lord. And oh God, we know that you are great and mighty. What a privilege it is that we are assembled here in this place today. And we lift up our praises from the fruit of our lips to you on this day, a day that was not promised to any of us. And oh God, we ask you now to look into our hearts if you see anything there that should not be there, we ask you to take it away from us. And as we confess our sins, we're grateful for the forgiveness that you will give us. Oh God, we thank you today for this privilege that you have allowed us to assemble here. We thank you today for your love, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you that you've been watching over us and keeping us unto now. Yeah. We thank you for being our provider, for putting the food on our table and the clothes on our back yes. and a roof over our head. Yes. Oh God, we know that you have watched over us through dangers seen and unseen. Mm -hmm. In times like these, we praise you now for having kept us to this moment in time. Yes. And oh God, we pray that you will continue to keep us we ask that you would bless every soul that's in this place. Thank you, Lord. That whatever way we came into this building today, that we, when we leave here, we'll leave another way. Yeah. We ask that you would bless everything that we do on this day. And, oh, God, in everything that we do, we pray that it would honor you. Yeah. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. Yeah. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Community service is a time when the church gets to do three things. We look outward and see what God has saved us from. We look inward to see what God has done in ourselves, and we look upward to give praise to our God. It is important for us to take part in these elements because it's what Christ has commanded us to do. So I want to read a passage for you, and then I'll get into the actual service of communion. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the Bible says this, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For when, whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So we have an opportunity, brothers and sisters, to, to thank God for what we are not now. We're not out in the world. We're not people in the world. We're not people that are uh, unsaved. God has brought us into his body. He has made us one, uh, one with one another and one with himself. Thank God. He has also saved us, and we know where we have come from. We look inward, and we know that we are not what we used to be, but we praise God that we're not where we are going to be finally when we finally look up and see his face. Yes, Lord. At that time, consummation comes, the end, and we will get ushered into heaven. Praise God. So as the gentleman passed the elements out, Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
Father, we just thank you for what you did by sending your son. We thank you for having the, the thought patterns, the, the thinking process, just to orchestrate something like this. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who has come and now filled us, your people, and made us one with one another. We thank you for the communion of the saints, Father. We thank you for all of us who are gathered here this day, that we can be one with another, that we can say thank you, Lord, for all that we have, that we have all gone through in this last COVID year, that most of us have come through it uh, relatively uh, unscathed through what COVID has brought to people. Thank you. Yeah. We survived the riots and things in the streets. We survived people getting shot and killed. Come on, man. Come all on. Yeah. Come on. Thank you, Lord. We're still thank here you. saying thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord. Father, we just ask that you continue to bless us as we walk on in our life yes. and give us the strength to every day wake up and yes. take another step for Jesus yes, Christ. Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. And be made in his image. And we ask all these and many other blessings in the natural name of Jesus Christ, yes. uh, your dear son, and all of God's people said, Amen. 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 You are. 
Good morning, new creation. He has risen. He has risen indeed. Y'all, I need y'all to talk back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Y'all going to have to forgive me this morning because I've, I've, I've been preaching to that for too long. And I've got people to preach to. And so I just want to say thank you for being here this morning. Uh, forgive us for our technical difficulties we've been having this morning. Uh, what can go wrong will go wrong, right? But we have been able to still have service no matter what. So let's try this again. When I say he is risen, you say he is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. Thank you for coming out this morning. Thank you for being here on Resurrection Sunday. Um, we are thankful. Sorry. I, I, it, it is. We got a little short in this line, so we're going to try to see what we can do. Um, don't worry. I can be loud without, without having to get a, get, have a mic. Uh, it, it might work. It may not. Let's, don't worry about it, Nikki. We're going to keep going. Um, it's good to see Sister Vivian here. Um, be in prayer for her. She lost her brother. Um, and funeral is on next Saturday. This Saturday, I'm sorry. And we will be in prayer for her as they travel to Arkansas. Um, also want to just say thank you for Man, it looks good. Y'all look good to me. It, I mean, just it, it, it's something different when you see a full body instead of just a little, a, a little, little screen. So, so y'all gonna have to forgive my excitement this morning. I, I came up here yet. Forgive the computer. I usually don't have a computer up here, but but I try to print something out. No ink. So I try to come back here and couldn't get this printer was working. I, it, 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 if it can go wrong, brother Sam, it was, it's gonna go wrong. But we gonna we gonna push through. Um, Today is Resurrection Sunday, and, and, and I don't know about you, but I'm excited about today because what better day to come together and, and have in-person service than Resurrection Sunday? The, the tomb is empty is the reason why we can be here. And so That's right. If I ask, I, I guarantee if I asked everybody in here, everybody would probably have a different answer. But the gospel simply means good news. So what is the good news? That Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again. But, but see, when we think about the gospel, what happens? We think about, we think about just we're being saved from our sin, and then we're going to go to heaven. We always think about the gospel in terms of past tense. He died for our sins. But the gospel is really in three tenses. He died for our sins. He has paid for the penalty of our sins. But then he also is saving us from the how he is saving us from the power of sin. From the power of sin. So, so that means that sin shouldn't rule our lives anymore. 
because of the gospel, we have been saved from the power of sin. And then lastly, he's going to save us from the presence of sin altogether. That one glad morning when this life is over, we'll, we'll fly away, right? Y'all know, y'all know the song. Uh, um, it says in a, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, we'll, we'll be changed. He's going to save us from the pure presence of sin. See, when we think about God, and I, I admit, that I'm, I'm going to tell on myself, when, when, I, when I got saved, it was always under the idea of I'm saved from my sins and I'm going to go to heaven. It, we, we very seldom talk about this life and how the gospel applies to this life. In our text today, we'll see a little bit of that there. But what's the purpose of the gospel? We, we want to go through that and talk about the purpose and, and hopefully we can see that in this text. Um, but honestly, if I, if I was truth of, true about it, we don't truly believe in the power of the gospel. We don't. We don't really believe in the power of the gospel. We don't fully believe that, that it's by faith and not works. It, we, we believe that we got to do something to earn it and get it. And, and, and we, we feel like we got to do something to get something and and we've got to be this because of what we do but but in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 Paul is making an argument and let's let's read it it says as for you you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient All of us lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. Paul lays out the picture of what we used to look like. If if you're saved, this is what, what you used to look like. You were, it said you were dead in your transgressions and sin, meaning you were spiritually dead. You were separated from Christ. And, 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 and he goes on to say, it, this is how you used to live. And, 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 and let's talk about that. Well, how did you used to live? It, it says you were follow the ways of this world and the ruler and the kingdom of this world. What it says, it says that we, we, we look like the world. And we, we followed the ways of the world. So how the world responded, it was how you responded. How the world did things is how we did things, right? Before we came to Christ, we all were under this pressure to be like the world. You, you, you were made to fit in. We see it today in cancel culture, that everybody has to fit a mode. And if you disagree with it, then you're going to get canceled. But that's not necessarily true for us as Christians. But, but back then, there's, when we're in the world, we, we look like the world. there should be a difference. There should be a difference. Can I say that? There should be a difference. Because if we look at our social media feeds, sometimes our feeds don't look too much different than the world's feeds. If we look at how we talk to people and how we interact with people, our, our lives don't look different than other people's lives. And we don't treat people like God would treat us. So, so, so there should be a difference. And Paul is saying we, we're, we're, we're under this influence of and looking like the world. And it says, it also says, and, and the ruler of the kingdom of this world. That means we're being influenced by Satan. Satan is, has a control over us. It says the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. Meaning when we're disobedient, this, the, the, the Satan, is, Satan is influencing us to be different, to be like the world. Verse 3, it says all of us lived among them at one time. Let me repeat that. All of us. All, so I know, I know, I know some of y'all think y'all deserve to be saved, but, but it says all of us, verse 3, lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. You know, I look back and, and, and I know I had somebody praying for me, Pastor Miles, you know why? Because there was a lot of times that I should have been worse off than what I was. 
Because I was gratifying the cravings of my flesh. And I was following its desires and thoughts. I, I, don't, I'm not, I know I'm not alone in this. Uh, but but, but we, we are, when we were in the world, we, we satisfied anything and everything that we wanted to do. The, the world has a hold on us. And, and, and see, that's why I wanted to talk about today is because when Jesus Christ died on the cross, it wasn't just so that we could get to heaven. It's for today and right now. And Paul is laying out this picture and it doesn't look good. It, it, it looks like we have to perform to be accepted, perform to be loved. You, you know, growing up, your, your parents only liked you when you performed a certain way. You felt like you only got loved when you did what they wanted you to do. Keep talking, Tammy. Uh, it says, like the rest, we were by nature deserving wrath. But look what it says. Verse 4. Oh, I love this verse. It says, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgression. It is by grace you have been saved. It, 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 what, what, what Paul is saying in, in Ephesians is the same thing he said back in Romans. It says, but God demonstrated his love like this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. When you were at your worst, is when Jesus Christ died for you. Amen. When you were satisfying your cravings, this is why he came, that's why he died. When you were at your absolute worst, he loved you. He loved you. He loved us so much so that he sent his son to die on the cross for us. It says, even when we were dead in our transgressions, Take a moment to think about that. I thank you, Pastor Bray, for, for communion because communion is, is that opportunity to think back when we were dead in our transgressions. Easter Sunday should remind us that the tomb is empty because he came to die on the cross for our sins. He paid a penalty that he didn't owe. He paid a price that he didn't owe. We owed the price. And it was a price we couldn't pay. Get that picture. We couldn't pay it. We couldn't satisfy it. We couldn't satisfy God with our lives, no matter how well we live. So he sent his son to die on the cross for us because he loved us. Because he loved us. But what does it say? It says, verse 6, it says, and God. I'm sorry, it is by grace you have been saved. Grace, we talked about this last week. Grace, grace is getting something you don't deserve. It's a gift. It's a gift. That means none of us deserve to be saved. None of us deserve to. It was a grace gift. It was a gift given by God to us. Let's go on. It says, verse 6, it says, And God raised us up so, with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that the coming ages he might show incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and not this from yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Uh, um, Paul continues on this idea of being being saved by grace. He, he says, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. This, this whole idea of the tomb being empty is, is what Paul is addressing here. He says Christ got up and because Christ got up, he raised us up to put us into the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. So that when God sees us, he doesn't see me and you anymore. He sees us as he sees Jesus, as, as, as blood washed, clean, forgiven of sin. Nothing that you have done is, is, is being held against you. We are, we are saved 
in order that in the coming ages, verse seven, he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressing kindness to us in Christ Jesus. In other words, he wants to show us off. He wants to show how good he is to us, to the world. Because you were dead in your transgressions, you were dead in your sins, and he wants to show how incomparable the riches of his grace are. That's the grace that saved us. That's the grace that we've been given. That's the grace that we have a responsibility to live for. But, but, but he doesn't stop there. He says, for by grace, you have been saved through faith. Faith alone in Christ alone. That is what we believe. That, that, that there's nothing else that it takes to be saved but faith in Christ alone. But a lot of us don't believe that. Let me let me let me ask a couple of questions. Let me ask you a couple of questions. Just let me let me kind of prove to you that that we we believe that we it's, it's, it's works driven. It says, do you believe you were saved by God's work and not your own? So 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 a, a pastor asked these questions and I got convicted. And, and, and most of us, based on this verse, we will say, no, of course not. God, it was God's work. And the next question was, do you believe you have to do little a little bit more to be saved from God, from God's wrath and love that's his child. Do you believe you have to do a little bit more? Do some work in the church in order to be saved, to do some work to be loved by him. Let, let, me, let me ask another question. So do you work hard at religious activity and will you do, you feel a little bit more accepted by God? A little bit more loved by the Father? When you work in the church and when you're doing things that God wants you to do, do you feel like you're accepted then? Do you feel like that's the only time God loves you is when you're doing work? See, 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 if we're honest about it, we've been we've been so conditioned by this performance culture that, that we feel like we have to do something for God to love us. We, we, we feel like we've got to we've got to be something for God to accept us. And some of us are holding on to sins that Christ has already died for. Christ has already died for them. They're forgiven. Psalms 103, verses 8 through 12. I'm gonna, I want to read from verse 8. It says, the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Do you believe that? Do we believe that? Or do we believe that when I sin, I got to I got to I got to read my scriptures more. I got to I got to double up on on Bible study. I, I've got to I've got to do this stuff so that God will forgive me. I've got to do this so he will accept me. I've got to do these things so that God will love me and God will pro, um, provide for me. Uh, we, we see it with tithing. I, I got to give my tithe so that God will, will get, open up the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing. That's not the scripture. That's not the gospel. See, if we only think about the gospel in terms of saving us and we're going to heaven and not about what our life is right now, we have minimized this gospel and put it in a little old box. This gospel is power. This gospel ha can free us from the power of sin. See, see, God has already forgiven us from our sins, so why haven't we forgiven ourselves? Why do we keep holding on to these things? You are forgiven. I am forgiven. And God isn't up. He, he's not in heaven freaking out about, oh, my God, my children are down there sinning. He's not worried about everybody's sin. He, he, he's not even worried about your sin. 
Because he's already dealt with it. It's already been dealt with. If you don't think about anything else from today's message, your sins have been forgiven. Past, present, future. The issue becomes our fellowship with him. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't love us any less. Or he doesn't accept us any less. One, 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 last, one, one last one. It, it, what happens when you disobey God? Or you sin against him? Well, well, I, I know it's not the, the big things like, oh, I didn't kill nobody. I didn't do it. Well, what happens when your, your thought life ain't right? When, when you have issues with your spouse or you, you, you get all these temptations to do all these things. Do you feel you have to put some distance between that sin? So you, 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 you ask for but but you don't feel right. You don't feel like you're back in fellowship with him. You, you got to put some distance between it. You wait a couple of weeks and then wait a couple of weeks and then you start to feel more accepted by God. See, see, when we think those things, that means that we don't believe in the gospel. We're not applying the gospel to our everyday life. See, Paul is, is, is in Ephesians, I feel like he's trying to argue this point. It's saying, it's for by grace are you saved through faith. And not of yourselves. It is a gift from God. Not by works. Not, there's nothing you can do at New Creation that's going to get God to love you more. There's nothing you can do here at New Creation or in this world that's going to get God to accept you more. He loves you unconditionally. So what do we do now? What do we do now? Verse 10. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do what good works which God has prepared in advance for us to do hmm it, it, the, the word handiwork or workmanship is, is this idea of, 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 of a carefully woven tapestry just, just think about that God is God is 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 he he cares so much about us that he carefully weaves us together and creates us in the way because we're all created in the imago Dei, in the image of God. See, when we deal with other people and we don't see them as the imago Dei, the, that uh, image bearer of God, we, we, we're not dealing with them the way God would deal with them. Uh, uh, but it says, we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do what? Good works. See, see, good works doesn't get you saved. Good works can't, can't make God love you anymore or accept you anymore. Good works can't, can't do anything for your salvation. But God has created us so that he can show off his glory through us. He can, he can manifest himself through us, through, through how we treat each other that will impact somebody else because he's already prepared these good works for us to, what does it say? In advance for us to do. I like, I like the one verse that says for us to walk in. When you walk in, it's already prepared. You just got to walk into it. It's already ready for you. You just got to walk into it. it. God has already prepare good works for each and every one of us to do. He has a ministry for each and every one of us. He has a, a, a way of reaching out to other people through you to show off his incomparable riches of his grace to this world. And he wants to do it through us. He wants to do it through me. He wants to do it through you. It's not just the pastor. It's not just the elders. It's through each and every one of us. So, so, so today, I, I, this, was, this was a family message. This wasn't for Facebook. I know we're putting it on Facebook, but, but this is a family message. This is for, for us as believers because this doesn't apply to be believers. The, the gospel applies to everybody. But only for us who are saved have good works been prepared for us to do. 
So what is God saying to you right now? What is God challenging you with right now? What is God challenging each and every one of us in this body to do? See, I know COVID provided a good excuse. COVID provided a good excuse, but we can't use that excuse anymore. Sometimes you got to take time to be safe, and that, that's, that's wisdom. But, but COVID doesn't keep us from making phone calls. COVID doesn't keep us from sending emails, text messages. COVID doesn't stop some of us from going to work. I've been blessed to be able to stay at home. But I know some of us have been able have to go to work. And how we treat each other at work, there's good works for us there. Because God has already prepared those for us. So, New Creation, I challenge you this morning. What are those good works? Pray that the Holy Spirit will, will reveal those to you. Because he has saved us from our sins. And he's going to save us from the presence of sin. But right now, he is saving us from the power of sin. The, the power of sin is no longer active. It, it, it doesn't have a hold on us. That means that we can overcome anything that comes our way. Because the Holy Spirit rests in us. He lives in us. The Bible says, I am crucified with Christ. No, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives through me. So, so let us pray and ask God, this communion, this Sunday, this Resurrection Sunday, that God will prepare us for the good works he has. Forgive us. He's already forgiven us. So, so I ask that you forgive yourselves. For the sin. Some of, some of us have been walking around thinking that God, we got to do all this stuff because God hasn't accepted us. And the, and it, the Bible says, while we were the worst we can be, the worst we can be, God died for us. While we were dead in our transgressions and sins. So don't let that hold you back from doing what God has called you to do. Not because God is going to love you more or accept you more is because God has given us the privilege. Because he saved our souls. While we were at our worst, he's given us the opportunity to live for him. That's a, that's a great ch- opportunity. That's, that's, that's being on a winning team and no matter what. <laughs> you, you, no matter what comes your way, you won. <laughs> no, no, no matter what happens, you won. I was watching March Madness last night, and, and, and man, Gonzaga, that game, man. I, I actually picked Gonzaga to win the championship, Chris Dean, and, and I was nervous until the very end. And he hit that shot. But, you know, you know when we're on God's team, no matter what happens, we won. We win, we won, we will win. It doesn't matter how, it, how you slice it or dice it, we got the victory. So let us walk out of here. Encouraged that we are loved and nothing we can do can get God to love us more. That he loves us unconditionally and he has prepared us for good works. Let us go out and find those good works that God has prepared for us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this day and we thank you for allowing us to come and just fellowship in person. One more time. It's been over a year yes, yes, yes. since we've been in this building. Yes. And we know the building doesn't define the church. We are the church. But it is, it is, it is awesome when, when two or three can gather and we can fellowship and we can spur one another along to love and good deeds. We can encourage each other. We can check on each other and see how everybody's doing. We can, we can physically see people. Thank you, God, for bringing us through this year of absence. Lord, we pray that the elders, as we consider reopening fully and and coming back to church, you give us wisdom. You give us guidance that we make the right decision, the safe decision, the decision that you will be pleased with and that will protect this body of Christ. Lord, we pray for all the other churches that are opening or not opening. We pray that you just continue to be with them. 
Thank you that you are God Almighty. Thank you that you have died on the cross for our sins. We thank you that you were buried. But Lord, we thank you most of all that the tomb is not empty. The tomb is not occupied, but it's empty. That you rose from the dead. So Lord, we pray that you just be with us now. Give us the courage, the, the strength that we need to live for you. To walk into those good deeds you have prepared for us. So that we can show this world the incomparable riches of your grace. Use us now, Lord. Help us to forgive ourselves where we continue to harbor past sins. We continue to dwell on the past and we haven't released ourselves. But let us know that you've already forgiven us. That's a done deal. You sit your son to die on the cross for our sins. Lord, give us the strength, the courage to live for you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. New creation. We're doing a little things a little bit different. To be safe, we're going to do offering as you walk.